There is a box in every crafter's home that is filled with old, unfinished projects and stuff you thrifted in the hopes of upcycling that becomes abandoned, that becomes forgotten. Well, this is the series that tackles that forgotten box. This is the Style Pile. Hello! The item of clothing that's coming out of the Style Pile box today is this light green skirt that I recently thrifted from the Red Cross Op Shops for $7. It's already a pretty cute skirt, but I also just learned a new embroidery style, and it's called Daisy Chain Stitch. And I want to apply my new knowledge to this skirt because I think they'll go really well together. So I opened up my box of embroidery threads and I decided to go for classic daisy colours, white for the petals and yellow for the centre. The first thing that I did was to draw on small dots where I wanted each flower to go. I am using this water soluble dressmaker's pencil to do this. Each flower is spaced out approximately 5 inches from one another in metric, that's about 13 centimetres. And I did the same thing to the back of the skirt as well. And the next step was to start embroidering. So a couple of hours later, I had finished the back of the skirt and this is what it looks like. And now I'm gonna show you all how to stitch one of these daisies up close. So first things first, this type of stitching is a lot easier if you have an embroidery hoop like this one. The smaller inner hoop goes under the fabric that you wanna work on. So I slipped that inside the skirt and then the larger hoop goes on top of the smaller one like so. And then after the larger ones fit on top of the smaller one, you just tighten the screw on the larger hoop to hold the fabric in place inside the hoop. And the fabric should be pulled nice and taut across the hoop because it makes the fabric easier to stitch on. Also, because my fabric was very thick, very denim-like, I didn't need to use any stabilizer. However, if you're using stretchy or thin fabric, then I recommend using embroidery stabilizer or ironing interfacing to the back of your fabric first before stitching your flowers onto it. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how I thread an embroidery needle using these four items. This is a little bit more involved than threading a regular sewing needle and I have a couple of helpful tips as well So pay close attention if you're new to embroidery So first I cut off a length of embroidery floss That's about the length of my forearm now embroidery floss actually consists of six smaller threads all twisted together I separated these into two groups each strand consisting of three threads each and I pulled them apart like this and I only needed one strand for now, so I put the other aside for the next flower. To thread my embroidery needle, I used this thing called a needle threader. And oh boy, are these useful, especially if you have shaky old hands like me. They're really easy to use. You just stick the wire end through the eye of the needle, which is a lot easier than sticking thread through it. And then you push the thread through the wire loop, pull the needle thread away, and bam, the needle's threaded. Now, I usually pull the tail end of the thread down like this to match the other longer end so that the thread is doubled over. This means I'm working with a total thickness of six threads while I sew, but I also won't lose the tail end while I'm sewing, which is why I like to do this. Anyway, after that, I tied a couple of knots in the end of the thread, then I cut off the excess thread from the knot, and now I'm ready to start stitching. To stitch the center of the flower, I went up through the back of the fabric at one of the pink dots that I drew onto the skirt earlier. And then I brought the needle back down about an eighth of an inch, which is around three millimeters away, and pulled the thread all the way through. And then I just brought my needle up and down a few times like this until I had created a small circle of yellow on the front of the skirt. To finish this off, I brought my needle and the thread through to the back and I tied a couple of knots in the thread close to the fabric. And then I cut off this excess thread tail. Next is the petals. I brought my needle, threaded with white thread this time, up through the front, just on the outside of the yellow circle. I pulled the thread all the way through, and then I inserted the needle right next to the spot where the needle just went up before. And then I pushed the needle through, but only halfway, like this. Then I grabbed the thread that I pulled through before, and I wrapped it around the needle once, like this. See how it's creating a petal shape? After creating a loop with the thread, I pulled the needle and the thread all the way through, and now I have a petal. I finished off this stitch by putting the needle back down through the fabric, just on the other side of the thread, on the top of the petal, and I pulled the thread all the way through to the back. And that's it, that's how you do a daisy chain stitch. So to make this into a flower, I just continued this stitch all the way around the circle of yellow, bringing each new stitch up just next to the last one. And time lapse. Thank you. 
To finish the daisy off, I did the same thing as before. I brought the needle and thread through to the back and I tied it off with a couple of knots. Now, I could get away with just tying knots at the back of my stitches because this skirt isn't close fitting to my body. But if you wanted to do this on a tight fitting piece of clothing or something with thin fabric, and if you think the knots will cause small visible lumps through the fabric, or if you think the knots will rub against your skin, you can avoid knots altogether with another method of tying off your threads. And I'll pop a link to a great tutorial for that in the description box below this video. Anyway, that's it. Pretty easy, right? Now, while this is an easy stitch to do, hand embroidery is pretty time consuming. Even though each flower only took about 10 to 15 minutes each to stitch, with more than 20 flowers on the skirt, that time adds up. I recommend sitting and chilling out and watching some TV or a movie while doing this. It's actually a very relaxing evening activity. Oh, one last thing that I had to do. As you can see, this skirt has pockets and it was very hard trying to stitch flowers onto these pockets while also not going through them and, you know, trying to keep them functional as pockets. So I actually half removed the pockets by snipping out and removing the stitches on two sides of each pocket, which let me get my embroidery hoop in under this fabric much more easily. And then after stitching the daisies onto the pockets, I simply sewed the pockets back on with some matching thread and a straight stitch, following the faint leftover lines of the old stitches. And here's the final reveal. One, two, three, fuck it. I love it, it's such a simple but effective upcycle. I'm definitely gonna be doing this on more pieces of clothing. I decided to wear this skirt with two different outfits to show you all. The first is more wintry, and I think it'd go well with a pair of tights and coat. And the second is more of a summery outfit. Which outfit do you like better? Anyway, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon who help to keep this channel running and allow me to continue making videos for you all. To become a supporter, and seriously, just $1 a month helps out so much, go to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria. <laughs>